We have the latest information on a deadly shooting in Lexington. The death of one of their classmates has inspired students at one Louisville high school to make an upgrade at Cosair Children's Hospital. Details ahead. And a stretch of Interstate 64 dedicated to a fallen Kentucky State Trooper. We'll have details on that coming up. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon on this Friday. Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. A murder investigation is underway now after a man who was gunned down at a Lexington strip club overnight died. The Fayette County coroner says 23 year old LaRoz Lee Mitchell died at UK Hospital after being shot outside Camelot East on Richmond Road. Police are now investigating his death as a homicide. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy has the latest on the search for his killer. It's our top story at 4 30. Police got a call of shots fired out here around 2.45. Their victim, a 23-year-old, died at UK Hospital. LaRoz Lee Mitchell died Friday morning from multiple gunshots. Right now, officers don't have any leads and they haven't made any arrests. They say there were no witnesses to the crime outside the club. They're reviewing surveillance video hoping to identify someone. This is the second reported shooting outside Camelot East this month. People working in neighboring businesses say they're concerned and tired of hearing about the shootings. I'm sure that the people that live around here are nervous. I mean, there's lots of apartments over there, and it would make me nervous if I lived over there. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we are pulling police records. We're finding out just how many times they have been over here to Camelot East in the last decade and how many shootings they've dealt with just in the last year. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Lexington police say back in 2012, LaRoz Mitchell was shot outside an apartment in Lexington during a dice game. That same shooting incident killed a Henry Clay student, high school student. The shooter, Deontay Hayes, was sentenced to 35 years. Well, a taste of spring has returned just in time for our weekend. We've had some sunny skies. We've got temperatures rising all the way up to the 60s. Oh boy, we are feeling some gusty winds out there and some chances for rain as well. Let's check in now with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. What an absolutely fantastic Friday of weather across Kentucky. Thermometers, as you mentioned, deep into the 60s in many areas. Winds, okay, we could do without the gusts out there. Live sky cam over top of Hamburg Pavilion after mostly sunny skies early. Clouds are beginning to creep back into town. Can't rule out a shower late this evening, but look at the humidity levels. The atmosphere is pretty dry right now. 33% temperature, 63. Winds coming from the southwest, 22. Gusts are greater than 35 miles an hour. Let's show you that Friday uh, weather cam right now. Here we are last week. On this Friday, dealing with snowy conditions across the entire region. All the snows pretty much melted, though you can still see a little on the Jenkins cam there in the far southeastern Kentucky, but much better travel weather today than where we have been. That little bank of some clouds across central Kentucky working toward the south may try to spit out a shower, but look at the thermometers this evening. Are you kidding me? Still windy early, but temperatures will stay mid to upper 50s right on through 11 o'clock this evening. Mild weekend, can't rule out a couple of showers though. As we wrap up the weekend, then old man winter starts a little one-two punch at us. As we go into next week's seven-day forecast, guys, with some ups and some big downs just ahead. A clerk at a Lexington gas station was able to turn the tables on a would-be robber. Police say a man stole money and cigarettes from the Circle K on Richmond Road about 2.30 this morning. The clerk chased after the man who picked up a pipe on his way out of the store, but the clerk was able to steal the pipe and beat the robber, who police say left with some bruises. Lexington firefighters blame four space heaters for an early morning fire on Kelsey Drive off Alexandria just before four this morning. Five people were inside the home when that fire started and they managed to escape. Firefighters say there were no working smoke detectors in the home. A Louisville high school student who became a champion in the fight against cancer is being remembered by his classmates in a very special way. And they're helping transform one of the rooms at Cosair Children's Hospital that helped Owen McMasters before his death earlier this week. Ann Bowden has the story. He was the guy who always found a way to smile about something. He always had that goofy personality. Even when he had to endure harsh treatments to fight his T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, classmates say Owen McMasters shined. Every day for four years until the end of his fight on February 15th. Now, in his honor, Noah Means Simonson is launching a life changing project. We started the foundation online, which gave us the chance to raise money online to update the Teen Gaming Center. And it was a, 
it was a great opportunity. Students and staff created these t-shirts. The goal is to sell the shirts to raise money to improve a room where Owen spent much of his time, the teen activity room at Coast Air Children's Hospital. It's a small room compared to the younger children's activity room. For the teens 12 and older, we just don't have a room that's updated with good technology, um, comfortable surroundings and furniture. With the selling of these t-shirts, Owen's classmates hope to change that. In fact, their mission spread throughout the community and to three other schools who joined in. So did Norton Healthcare, who supplied the shirts. When you see the community rally like this, especially a group of young people, it's so inspiring. The goal is to raise $10,000. We have the opportunity to help people. Now this room has been here for about 15 years and has only gotten about one upgrade during that time. But with the money that's being raised, there is confidence that this room will be transformed for many more to come. Good thing being done by some teenagers. Owen passed away on Monday and he was laid to rest this morning in Casey County. A tribute today for a state police trooper killed in a crash. Interstate 64 between mile markers 95 and 105 is being dedicated to Anson Blake Tribby in a ceremony in Fort Moorhead. He was killed in January of 2013 when he stopped along that stretch of interstate in Clark County to help someone involved in another crash. He was off duty at the time. Tribby's widow says her husband was the kind of person who would help someone no matter what. I can't wait for the sign to be put up. It's always been Blake's spot to me since that night. And for everyone to drive by that area now and see his, this sign, it just it means the world to me. The signs will be installed next week if the weather cooperates. One of America's most famous and adored authors died today. Harper Lee was 89 years old, writer of the classic novel To Kill a Mockingbird. Her publisher said Lee passed away peacefully and described her as an extraordinary woman of great joyfulness. Kenneth Craig looks back. When To Kill a Mockingbird hit bookshelves, Harper Lee's first novel was an instant success. It went on to become an American literary classic. For decades, the story of racial inequality and social injustice has been standard reading in schools across America. The work was loosely based on Lee's life growing up in the Deep South. She was born in 1926 and raised in Monroeville, Alabama, where she became close friends with writer Truman Capote. She moved to New York in 1949, where she published To Kill a Mockingbird. It won the Pulitzer Prize and became an Oscar-winning movie, with Gregory Peck starring as the noble Atticus Finch. There are some things that you're not old enough to understand just yet. In 2007, President Bush presented a very frail Lee the Medal of Freedom. That same year, Lee suffered a stroke and returned permanently to Monroeville, where she lived a reclusive life. Last year, she was thrust back into the spotlight with the publication of her second novel, which was actually written before Mockingbird. Lee's attorney claimed to have discovered the manuscript of Go Set a Watchman in a Safe Deposit Box. It was published with enormous fanfare, despite questions about whether Lee had ever intended to release it and concerns over her health and mental competence. Some readers were shocked at the novel's racist overtones, but the book set a one-day sales record for adult fiction. Lee died at the age of 89, leaving behind a treasured literary legacy that began with one of the most influential novels in American history. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. Former President George W. Bush released a statement saying that Lee was ahead of her time and that to quote, to kill a mockingbird, prodded America to catch up with her even decades after its publication. Her hero Atticus Finch inspires every reader. I was downtown and all of a sudden the wind <laughs> hit me right in the face. It was like hitting a wall. I was literally almost pushed back. Kind of I mean, have to brace yourself to walk yeah, today a little bit. Yeah, strong. Chris Bailey, is this all this wind going to push out for us? Yeah, it's slowly winding down now. Instead of 52 mile per hour gusts like what we had a little earlier, we're down to 32 in Lexington. That's a bargain considering where we have been. But that warmer air coming in on the nose of those very gusty winds today. Look at the late afternoon, early Friday evening temperatures, low 60s.
across the entire area. 63 London, 63 Mountain Parkway in Lexington, 64 in the capital city of Frankfurt. All locations, though, now seeing a little more in the way of clouds compared to what we started out the day with. Had to near full sun for a while earlier in the day. Right now, the clouds are back in here. Wouldn't be surprised if we don't even squeeze out a sprinkle or a light shower late this evening into the wee hours of the morning. When I come back a little later on, we'll walk you through the entire weekend. We'll show you how the weather uh, pushes across the region each and every hour with the all important hour by hour forecast. Something else that is important on a Friday as we roll into the weekend traffic. Let's check in with Officer Don. Well, we certainly have some issues this afternoon. First, we get an overall view of traffic flow, and we can see in real time what's happening out there on Nicholasville Road, Southland Drive. The backup starts uh, outbound Nicholasville Road and also around the circle. Uh, a couple of collisions working as well. Uh, we're working one downtown. That's a non injury crash that police are working, uh, and also one on Keene Road. So we can see the one on Keene and Jessamine County. Things have settled down a little bit there, not quite as bad getting past it, and then over to downtown for the crash that uh, police are working near Rupp right now on Lime. Stone. Uh, don't forget Hamburg's a mess too. Still, that uh, that situation's been cleared, but traffic very slow on Man of War approaching Hamburg to Nicholasville, 17 minutes. Georgetown, 14. Paris, about 22 minutes on Paris Pike. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A special pregnancy, cop Kanye, and how one man tested the strength of his teeth. It's the video that we'll have you talking. Take a look at this. Gorilla Mia Moja is pregnant. She's expected to deliver a healthy baby in May. The Louisville Zoo says that like pregnant humans, pregnant gorillas experience a change in their taste. So during her first trimester, Mia Moja would drink only grape juice, refusing apple, cranberry, or orange. Western lowland gorillas are considered critically endangered, and her pregnancy is part of a breeding survival plan. <laughs> Police in Philadelphia are trying to help Kanye West out of debt, and it appears they're offering him a job. The police department tweeted this to the famous rapper yesterday. It reads, we are hiring, starting salary of just under 48000 It finishes with, you could be debt-free by the year 3122. <laughs> West recently tweeted that his dreams brought him into debt, citing his music business and clothing line, saying both are costing about $53 million. He then tweeted that Mark Zuckerberg should invest one one billion dollars in him as the greatest artist of all time. As for the job vacancy, Philly police say West has yet to respond. Okay. The Times of Israel newspaper is calling him Gaza's Jason oh, Statham. 20 year old Mohammed Baraka is making a name for himself. He is pulling a 12 ton bus with his teeth. His stunt has made him a local hero in the Gaza Strip. His videos have been shared on Facebook among Palestinians. Uh, in his free time, he told the newspaper he also enjoys walking on nails and cracking bricks on his <laughs> chest and his back. The whole time, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> just my teeth are hurting. Are the whole they still time there? Reading that. Okay, oh, they're still there. Goodness All gracious. Right, strange. <laughs> on that one, stick with us. Here's what's coming your way now at 5 o'clock.